Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 43 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Hooray! Uh, so last episode we wrapped up, we did a bunch of cool automated crafting things. Uh, we made an automated system that I am personally pretty proud of. I think it works beautifully. It detects when there's items there, it'll automatically turn on these energizers, it'll do all kinds of cool stuff. The only downside to our system right now is that we really only have one uh, crafting mechanic that we can do at a time. So for example, when I go ahead and request, uh, like for example, some pure Certus Quartz, so for example, if I came in here and said, hey, give me three of these guys, right? It's gonna go ahead and craft it. But right now, our crafting system is sitting there waiting for those three pure Certus Quartz crystals to grow. And while they're sitting there in that little system, growing slowly but surely, our crafting system is a little bit tied up because we only have one of these crafting devices. And if we were to go ahead and ask for something else, so for example, if we requested uh, more pure Certus Quartz, right? It would tell us, um, well, that one's probably the one that's already in use. So let's say we want Fluix crystals. So if we wanted to craft pure Fluix crystals, um, you know, looks like it's probably gonna let us, maybe that thing's already done. Yeah, it finished its crafting process, that's why. But basically we can't craft more than one thing at a time. So what are we gonna do to solve this problem? We're gonna go ahead and uh, make ourselves some more crafting storage units. And I think I might wanna move them somewhere. So I'm really trying to kind of think about how I want this whole area laid out. Uh, I do know I want this room to mostly be responsible for applied energistics type stuff, including some of the storage that we're gonna have. So it's also gonna have some storage devices. We might want some more crafting storage units placed along the wall here. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So let's jump into the floor for the time being and see what kind of mechanics we've got going down under the ground here. I should really organize my um, stuff, to be honest with you, but eh, we'll get there. So right now we've got this guy coming out that has a few things going on. We've got this thing coming out that's got a few channels in use. We might want to start taking a look at maybe uh, having more of an upgraded system here. Let's see. So, so far uh, we can craft smart Fluix cables and we can ca craft uh, covered cable and we can craft Fluix cable, right? So what other kinds of cables are available? Well, dense cable comes to mind as a uh, potential here that we might want to look into. So there should be a dense cable Fluix, right? So dense cable black. Fluix, there it is, cool. So all you have to do to get dense cable Fluix, it's pretty easy, it's not too hard to do. It's four covered cables, plus a redstone and glowstone. That will give us dense cable Fluix. So let's actually teach the AE system how to do that while we're at it. Uh, let's say if we had three more of these, start that up please, boom and done. And we can use this to get dense cable Fluix. Yes, that's what I want and this guy's gonna be one of these patterns. So now we can just drop it in one of our interfaces. That's a molecular assembler interface. Cool, there we go. Now we can auto craft dense cable. Let's take a look at the dense cable while we're at it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna request about 10 of these. Uh, oh right, we need more glowstone. I think it's time for me to take a trip to the nether. Is there any good way to get glowstone in some kind of fun and automated method? Well, not really anything exciting there. Scrap box, pulverizers, mana infusion, that's not really. I can turn redstone into glowstone and I can double it when I get the conjuration catalyst, but that's pretty more high tier. I don't think we're quite ready there. Bees, centrifuging, rock crusher, distillery. Uh, I think a trip to the nether is in order, so let's go. I'm gonna pop off to the nether. I'll be back in a few. I'm going to make sure to get myself a bunch of glowstone and probably some quartz while I'm down there too because I think last time I checked I was a little bit low on quartz. So I am off on another adventure and it doesn't sound like something that's going to be very worthy of YouTubing so I'll be back in a few minutes once I've completed my uh, hunt for these resources and if anything exciting happens I promise I'll come back and show you anything exciting like a phantom sneaking up on me. Ooh, I hate those phantoms they're so nasty but I got them. All right back in a few when I've completed this adventure. Alright guys, now we're talking. Definitely got myself a decent amount of resources here, and I actually happened to drop a few into the AE system, um, you know, remotely, thanks to my awesome ender pouch that I've got, so I should have a bit of glowstone. Yeah, I got a little bit. I, was, I did spend a little bit of time down there, I won't lie. But we've got a good amount now, so 
Let's get to making some cables. So we'll uh, want to start off with some dense cables. Let's make about 10 of them just to get started here. Um, that'll probably be a good starting point as a matter of fact. Let's see, how are you doing? So here's one point that we should talk about. Um, you notice there's multiple steps involved in crafting these dense cables, and you'll see how long it's taking me to craft them. Because first we have to craft the quartz fiber, then we have to craft the fluix cable, then we have to craft the covered cable, then we have to craft the dense cable. So there's multiple steps involved, right? So let's see how to speed this up. So if we wanted to, we could throw a crafting coprocessor unit onto the multi-block structure that is the crafting unit. This is a multi-block structure. It's only got one block in it right now, but by dropping the crafting coprocessor on there, you'll notice that now it is uh, extended as a multi-block, and it now has the ability to craft more than one thing at a time. The more uh, crafting coprocessors we place down, the more things it can craft at once. So if I were to now go ahead and request some dense cable and say 10 of them and start, you'll notice that uh, the crafting crafting process is going significantly faster because it's able to do multiple things at one time. Now it is scheduled to craft us uh, some pure fluix crystal, which obviously will take a minute, but you can definitely notice the speed increase um, when we've got two crafting processes going at once instead of one. So we were able to basically craft twice as many things, um, you know, twice as fast. Neat, right? So I'm going to uh, keep that uh, multi coprocessing unit uh, concept in mind and we'll come back in just a second after the last bits of fluix cable here we're waiting for the pure fluix crystal to finish crafting at the moment i believe which is probably sitting right there so you stay in the water please should probably take my ring of magnetization off when i'm standing near that thing and uh we'll be back in like i said a moment just to take a look at um how we can use this dense cable to get things going a little bit. What we should also probably teach this thing, by the way, is what can we use dense cable for? I know there's multiple things. Um, one of them being, I think we can get smart dense cable, can't we? Or is it already smart? Dense cable might already be smart. Let's see. I'm just going to test it real quick. Where's the wrench? You know, I think it is smart by default. Yes, it is. So dense cable is already smart. Awesome. Okay, guys, so I've started cleaning up a little bit of my AE system down here underground. I would like to make it, you know, a little bit fancier and a little bit nicer of a setup. So in order for this to work, we're going to have to uh, know how to use dense cable and some channels to make things just behave a little bit better. So right now we've got uh, a disconnect right here. So this thing is no longer hooked up to the main system and you can see it's not receiving power or channels. So let's plug it back in. So what I'm gonna do is first run some dense cable straight out of here. And I'm gonna run it down, I think, a little bit. And the dense cable is a pretty cool uh, mechanic. What it does is it allows you to transfer 32 channels instead of eight. So think of dense cable like four cables in one, right? So you can transfer 32 channels per dense cable instead of just the regular old eight. That's an important mechanic because it means that you can then plug into uh, the channels elsewhere and uh, access them and have plus plenty and plenty of channels, right? So for example, I'm gonna grab some uh, Fluix cable here and I'm going to allow uh, this smart Fluix cable to tap into here. So you'll notice that this guy is using five channels, right? And you can see that's true across the board. But we're really only using, you know, one of the channels that are available on this dense cable. So we have plenty more that we can do with this dense cable that we're not already doing, okay? And that's an important fact. Cool. So let's uh, actually consider how we want to run this stuff. So what I'm thinking is I might want to actually um, move this, you know, nifty little crafter into the floor. That's what I'm thinking, right? So we'll have a 4K storage unit here, and we'll have the coprocessor back here under the wall so that this guy is now one of our crafting units. Cool. And we can still see we're using the same number of channels, of course. What I wouldn't mind having is another 4K uh, crafting unit, so let's make one. So I just need a 4K one of these dudes, and in order to get that, I'm going to need one, two, three of you. And then I can have this thing, and then I can have this thing, and I've got the crafting units ready. Okay? And then I'm going to want to also have the crafting coprocessor. There we go. So now I'm going to have two of these ready to be hooked up. Okay, and I'm probably gonna place this guy here. Now 
and his coprocessor can go back here. Now I've got the ability to request two crafting mechanics. So with the coprocessor, you can do multiple things at once, but you can still only request one item. So when I'm waiting for Fluix Crystals, this thing's still tied up. That's why we now have a second one, so that we can have two crafting mechanics going at the same time. And because I want to make sure that these things uh, you know, don't connect to the dense cable, I actually want it to connect to the Fluix. I'm going to actually, let's see pick you up and I'm going to put a cable anchor here and then I'm going to put my dense cable back down. There we go. Cool. So now we should see everything light up and connect. So this channel uh, coming off here going to eight devices, right? One crafter, two crafter, three is, uh, or it's actually six devices, right? Three is the drive and then one, two, three terminals. Cool. So we could even put two more things on this line if we wanted to. If I wanted to have another crafter maybe over here, which I might add at some point, that shouldn't be a problem. Now we can continue to run our uh, cables downstairs. So let's do that. I'm going to jump into bat mode here and just run what I think is going to be... I'm probably going to try and remove this guy. So come back here, you guys. And I want to have both things downstairs connected. So right now we've got, you know, one set of machines here and another set of machines there, right? So we're going to actually clean this up so that it's going to be a little bit less complicated, okay? So we're going to use just dense cable here. One smart flux cable here going in. So that is going to connect up to that guy. That looks good. So there's four units there, right? One, two, three, four. And then this smart cable can come down here, connecting into that. And we'll see how many of these channels light up. Five. Nice. So now we've got five channels here, right? One, two, three. And then we've got a fourth there. Is that connected up? Where's the fifth one? I'm sure. I think it's down here, maybe? That's right, it's connected over there for the uh, export of stuff. That's right, it's the export bus on this thing. That's your fifth channel. Okay, so we've got five channels there, four here, and then like I said, we've got a total of six up here. Cool. So what is that, 15? Did I add that up right? So you can see we're only really using three right, of the channels that are available on the dense cable. So plenty of channels are available. I know you guys are like worried about how you know you can keep track of all these channel things. It's really not that hard, especially when you get to the point where you can make dense cable, which isn't hard. It's really easy to make. And now we've got plenty of access on this thing. We could probably run our entire AE system on one side of the ME controller. I mean, ME controllers don't have to be too complicated, especially when you've got dense cable. Cool, right? So that is how you can use dense cable to make things a little bit cleaner. Now we've got plenty of room available on this dense cable line, so that means we have plenty of room available for more uh, contraptions downstairs. So if we come, you know, jump down here, uh, I've kind of closed myself off, but you know what I mean. Plenty of room available on the channel network for the dense cabling. You know, you can basically run plenty of smart cables off of your dense cables and not have to worry too much about your channel use. Nice. By the way, speaking of automated funness, oh nice, we've got a lot of ender pearls going. I like it. Have you picked up any? I've noticed these things tend to pick up ender pearls every now and then. I think they have like a range where they just pick up items that drop while they're active. So I'm actually gonna think about redoing some of this. I might actually wind up doing it now. Yeah, let's check out a new and efficient way to do this uh, sugarcane farm that I would like to clean up. I'm going to fix my floor, and then we're going to have a more efficient sugarcane farm coming up in just a second uh, once I've got everything covered up. Beautiful, right? So plenty of room downstairs. Don't have to worry about channel use. Nice. All right, I'll be back in a minute. I need to craft a few things. So as you can see, I'm currently crafting a couple things. Right now I'm doing Fluix Crystals on this guy and Annihilation Cores over on this one. So because we've got two crafting storages, we can request and craft two things at a time. Neat, right? So let's take a look at something that's pretty cool, in my opinion, Annihilation Planes. This is what I'm going to use to upgrade my sugarcane farm, and it's really quite easy to do. All I'm going to need is a little bit of cabling. So I've got about 30 of those glass cables. Let's tie in somewhere where we can find a nice spot. So let's rearrange this. This room is big and bulky, and while it's not terrible, uh, I've seen better rooms made in my day. 
Let's pick these up. We're going to take this chest with me. I should probably clean out some of my inventory at the moment. So these things can all go away. This can go away. Having the ability to clean out your inventory on the fly. Priceless. We'll even throw another lily seed in there. Cool. So let's see how much more compact we can make this courtesy of Applied Energistics. You ready? Let's do it. So first things first, let's grab you, you, we'll replant our nether wart that happened to land here, and I shouldn't need this here anymore to be honest with you. I'll put my magnet back on for good measure. One, two, three, four. So notice how much more compact this can become um, when we use Applied Energistics. Here goes nothing. So we're going to run some cabling out of the ceiling. Just uh, some dense cable here. Or some regular old cable, I mean. And we're going to tap him down right there. Now these guys will probably use a channel each, so keep that in mind. So we're going to want to make sure to tap into an area that's appropriate. But because these are multi-parts, they can all sit on the same block space. So we should have no problem planting this sugar cane right like so. Notice how much more efficient this is. Um, where can we tap into? So this is going to use four, so we should maybe think about tapping directly into um, the regular old cables. So let's do that. Or the dense cable, I mean. Let's do that. Let's go over here. This is roughly where we're talking. There it is. Cool. So that can go into there. And I wouldn't mind having... That's dense. I want just smart cable. There, like that. Cool. Now where is our dense cable tapping? There's our friend the dense cable. Let's try and be a little bit smart about how we lay out our messy cable system. There we go. And let's just run normal cable. Remember there's no real need to run, you know, the smart cable unless you really want to know how much power how much um, stuff you're using. And we'll we'll tap into here with the smart cable. So this is probably a good place as any to tap in, or do I want to do it back here more? I kind of want to make sure that if I want to run more cabling later, I can tap in just as easy, right? So if I put some smart cable here, you'll notice, uh, I don't want that connection there. Let's cable anchor this thing for the time being. And smart cable that guy. So he should light up. Yep, so you notice we're using four channels, one for each annihilation plane that we placed down. Cool. And now, check this out. Super compact way of doing the sugarcane farm. Just upgraded it because it was starting to get to me that it was so large and annoying. And it just looks a heck of a lot cooler. But let's go ahead and turn on our sigil of the green grove. And what we should see is the annihilation planes, what they do is they'll break anything that's in front of them. So for example, if I place a piece of stone there, it'll break it and suck it into the system, right? Boom, gone. Now, of course, it's going to turn stone into cobblestone, right? So keep that in mind. But things like sugarcane, not a problem. So perfect, right? Pretty neat. So with this sigil of the green grove on, these things should start growing pretty well for us. And what we should have is a nice automated sugarcane farm. Come on, sugarcane. Oh, I just heard one break. Cool. Very nice. So that'll do. I like it. Okay, guys. So the next thing I want to do is actually a really neat trick. Um, one of the things I'm having trouble with, or something that's kind of annoying me at the moment, is that... Um, I've got this system set up that's really cool for auto crafting on demand uh, pure flux crystals. But they take a good, I don't want to say long time, but like two or three minutes, you know, to craft them. And I really, I'm using a lot of them right now, right? There's tons and tons that I'm using. So, let's craft 100 sand, by the way. One of these guys is probably responsible for doing that. Nice. I like it. So uh, what do I want to do to solve this? Well, I want to do the following. Let's request 
an interface. And I should be able to craft this. Um, did I put the logic processors in here? I did not. Okay, let's try that again. I crafted more logic processors. Cool. So now we've got, you know, one machine working on the sand, one of the crafters working on this guy. Cool. So let's give this a few minutes. Um, you know, I'm probably tying up my machines. It looks like we're, again, running into that issue that I just mentioned where, um, you know, we're scheduled to make more Fluix stuff. And uh, long story short, it's just taken a while. So uh, we'll come back in a minute here once we've got everything crafted. And then I'll show you how we're going to set up our AE system to have access to and keep on hand a certain number of items at all times so that we don't have to craft them on demand. What I'd like to do is set it up so that my AE system always has one full stack of pure Fluix crystals ready to be used at any given time. Cool. So uh, to get this working, I need... A storage bus which we've already seen how to make right and we've used them before I'm also going to need an ME interface and the final thing I'm going to need is one of these it's called a crafting card okay and it's pretty easy to make uh, looks like we just need a basic one of these guys and we're gonna need a crafting table which shouldn't be too hard and then we can do crafting card cool Okay, so let's do it. Uh, we're going to pop downstairs. I've got some cables on me. So where would be a good place to tap into this? Let's see. We've got plenty of channels available on this thing. It might not be a bad spot to do it. I think right here. Let's do that. So what I'm going to have is the following. And I want to have access to it. That's easy. So I'm going to place down an ME interface right here. And I'm also, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the storage bus here. And we're going to put the interface here. Check that out, okay? So that should bring us up to a total use of seven channels on this line, which gives us one more channel to use if we ever need to. And we've got a storage bus, which gives, remember, the AE system access to whatever is stored currently in the ME interface, okay? Now the ME interface is cool because we can tell it to keep certain items stored at all times. So let's see how we're going to do that. What I want to have is Fluix crystals. Okay, I've got two pure Fluix crystals here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell this system, um, let's say I'm going to have one in here. Okay, so right now in the AE system, we've got one pure Fluix crystal. And it's currently stored somewhere in one of these ME drives. Who knows where, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell the system to keep one pure Fluix crystal always available in the ME interface, okay? So what we should have is that we should still have access to that pure Fluix crystal. We do. And when I pull it out, okay, and we come down here, it's no longer in here, okay? The reason being is that it doesn't have a way to make it, but we do know how to auto-craft it. What we can do is we can install this crafting upgrade card, which allows the ME interface to craft things on demand to fulfill its demands. So for example, if, and I'm gonna take off my magnet real quick, and we're gonna watch over here, notice these are off at the moment. If I just place a crafting upgrade card right in here, what we should see is the AE system is going to automatically attempt to craft for us. And you'll notice that right now it's processing probably some Fluix dust. Nice. And it just dropped a seed in there. Cool. So if we tell it, hey, don't just keep one. Keep, I don't know, how about 32? Pure Fluix crystals at all times. Okay. What it should be doing now is crafting a bunch more Fluix. Nice. If we come up here, we should see one of these crafting processors is responsible for making this thing happen. Right now it's working on the one pure Fluix. I don't know if it's going to uh, wait for that one to be done before it works on the next set because I just changed the config, but we'll see what happens. So in the meantime, what I can do to kind of trick this thing into thinking it's gotten its Fluix, I can just, uh, you're there, you're not crafting anything yet. Let's make it think it got one. I'm just going to place one in here. Boom, it should get placed in here. And now it's gonna try and craft the next 31 maybe. Look at that, it's currently scheduled to craft 31 pure Fluix crystals. So it's currently working on crafting the Fluix dust that we need, cool. And you can see it's gonna start dropping more and more seeds in here as that crafting process completes. So now we've got a way that will automatically keep a certain number of Fluix crystals always available in our AE network. 
Nice, right? So anytime I use a Fluous Crystal, it'll automatically craft more so that as I'm doing things like crafting machines and crafting stuff with AE, we don't have to sit here and wait for the two or three minutes for the crystals to turn into uh, fully grown pure crystals. And once this process is done, you know what? I could probably even just do it now. Let's get pure Certus Quartz in here. And I'm going to tell this guy to do the same. Let's see, if I click 9, and we'll do the same here. We'll bump this up to 32. Whoops. There we go. Always keep 32 pure Certus Quartz Crystal available. It should start doing the same thing for us. Um, so right now, one of these machines, there it is, is working on making pure Certus Quartz. It's doing 9 at the moment, but it's going to uh, do more shortly. Cool. So there we go. And we'll see this thing finish up. So when we get back in a minute here, I'm just going to wait about five minutes. And what we should see is an ME interface with 32 of each, which are also available to our AE system. So the trick here was having a storage bus attached to the ME interface, which is being told, keep this number of items in the system at all times. Cool trick, right? All right, guys, it looks like these things are kind of finishing up. We can see most of the processing being done here. Um, and if we come over here and see our interface, yeah, we're up to 30 pure flux. It looks like it'll probably hit 32 any moment now. So we're combining the auto crafting thing with the interface ability. Looks like uh, the pure certus is still doing the first initial bit that it was doing, but we'll pretty soon uh, wind up crafting a little bit more of these pure certus. So are you done now? Looks like there's a few more in there waiting to go. Nice. Neat. I like that. I am very pleased with that build. And of course, if we want to, we can expand this later. Plenty of more options, right? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six more things that we can keep crafted. So if we ever decide that there's something else that takes a long time to craft and let's keep a handful in the system at all times, not a problem. All right, guys, remember your crafting processes are going to be tied up uh, with this whole, you know, Thing that we're doing here so keep that in mind uh, as a result I am gonna go ahead and make that third crafting processor unit here so I'm gonna I'm gonna always have one co-processor unit. remember these are multi blocks so you can grow them larger if you want to have more co-processors and more storage that's all fine uh, let's go ahead and grab this multi tool here so what we're probably gonna want to have this is smart cable right so let's just tap in this and this. Remember, coprocessors can't exist by themselves, so that's why that thing uh, didn't show up. But now we should be able to plug this guy in right here, which will wind up using one more channel on our network, right? One more channel, boom. Yep, there we go. So you can see one channel there for a total. And this guy is actually a little bit more than half full now. Uh, we can see we're using five eighths of the network's capacity. So we're using about 20 to 21 channels maybe coming out of this block side. But remember, we still have plenty more that we can expand. So not anything to worry about. Uh, we can put our cable facade here now. Come here, you, fa you facades. There we are. Now we've got three of these awesome crafting things. I like it. So you can see it's still doing pure Certus Quartz Crystal, which is downstairs probably getting cooked up. I can't imagine it has much longer to go. Um, and this is working perfectly. So remember, every time that we uh, you know, pull out one of these pure Fluix crystals, it should automatically craft a new one. So let's try it. You ready? We're going to do pure Fluix crystals. And we're going to say um, 31 of them. And if we look now, one of these crafting guys should be responsible for making a new um, pure Fluix guy. There he is. Cool. Look, he's doing it. Nice, right? I love it. So nice and automated. Every time we use one, it's going to refill it. All right, guys. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment here. I think we're getting pretty close to wrapping up the episode. Yep, sorry to say, but it does look like it's time to wrap up the episode. However, I am really pleased with the progress that we've made today, uh, making this cool AE system be just that much more functional for us. So plenty more that we can do with AE, and I promise you guys we will at some point be doing even more with it. Uh, we have plenty of channels available here. We're probably going to need to expand uh, the system soon to have more uh, interfaces available on our blocks. But the plan here is right to have an interface 
interface here and then uh, or uh, you know the crafting guy like here for example and then we can just have an interface on this side an interface on this side and an interface on top without really having to have much of a channel system up and running so you can see much like the annihilation planes where you can be nice and compact with uh, the the blocks here that are interfaces that are in the same block space as the cable things are just super compact and you can do some cool stuff with them um we'll probably continue along how's this thing plenty of oil still so everything's going well over here with our power system what kind of power use do we have on the network out wow average out over 1500 rf well you know what a lot of that is actually a large amount of my power use right now what's it look like outside daytime is uh this thing being on what i'm actually going to do is turn off my zombie machine and I'm going to uh, turn off, oh that's not where I want to be, let's go over here, I'm going to turn off um, the growth of the ender pearl farm, I just dumped all my ender pearls into my network so actually with it on it should disable, right, so we have plenty of uh, life points available, 1500 LP, not a problem, we don't need the zombie processor um, thing running anymore and as a result we should be using far less power. Yeah, that's a little bit more realistic number of power use. I was going to say I was getting worried, but I would be interested to see what my AE system now with all this fancy machinery is doing. Uh, currently, it's using RF. Oh, not too bad. Yeah, energy use around 100 RF per tick. So a major part of my base's power use right now is this ME drive. But because of all the power that we've got, you know, getting generated over here by these machines, I'm not too worried about power use for the time being, at least until we run out of oil. Then we're going to have to start looking at another form of power gen because, you know, we could keep using oil for a while, but eh. We could always go for something more fun. All right, guys, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. We'll be back next time. Um, I think we might start moving on to something else, uh, maybe a couple different mods or something new. We've been doing a little bit of AE the last couple episodes, but I think we've done a lot with it that's really helped to make things more efficient. And uh, we have a really nice looking AE base now. We have plenty of channels available still on this controller, so I'm not too worried. And remember, the controller is a multi-block too, so if we ever need even more channels, we can get them. Uh, but there's still some things I want to do with AE, so we're definitely not done with it. Uh, Resource-wise, we're doing all right. We're not doing great. So we might need to start looking into some more resources at some point, but we shall see. All right, guys, take it easy.